All right, everyone, it's time to talk about quantum processing. Specifically, Google uh, has a giant computer called Sycamore, and it's now claiming that it's achieved quantum supremacy. That is, that for the first time, they've demonstrated that they've got the ability to process things considerably faster than like even the most high-end supercomputers. So what they're talking about is a uh, some some sort of and and trust me, I'm not like the nerdiest person in the world, so bear with me as I try to describe this in something that approaches like a you know, rational explanation. Their computer can do the same kind of calculations and processing in three or four minutes that a normal supercomputer can do, like a really high-end one, in 10,000 years. Uh, then they point out that there's a problem because they can't actually prove that without trying to process the same material which would take 10,000 years. Um, this reminds me, years and years ago, remember when some pessimists were talking about hard caps on processing power? Now, computers can't get any better than they are for, you know, for much longer. We've, we're going to achieve peak miniaturization. We won't be able to make computer systems any smaller, and therefore we won't be able to cram any more processing into a device you can actually reasonably physically use unless you have an aircraft carrier-sized room for it. Uh, the idea was that it's, as far as smartphones, laptops, desktops for gaming, whatever, and tablets and shit, uh, stuff like that, we would achieve a very hard limit and that we weren't that far away from it. You could only double processing power a few more times, which is great. You still, it's better than we had in the, in the XP era, although I'm still nostalgic for XP, which is why I run like XP compatibility and shit like that. Anyway, um, that ev everything would come to a halt. Then they started talking about uh, carbon nanotubules and how that might help and, and graphene and some of these other things. They talked about making processors different, like I guess one of the things they had overlooked for a while was the idea of having more smaller cores as opposed to a few big ones, and they found out that it simply made things more efficient or something like that, and I think HP was on the forefront for a while and Dell with doing that. Anyway, uh, now they're claiming, hey, uh, yeah, the wall is broken, quantum supremacy is here. Again, they can't prove it, um, not, I guess, to full satisfaction. I believe it, though. There's no reason for Google to come out and say this unless it's true. Yeah, I mean, I know they're in a race with a half a dozen other companies that are experimenting with quantum computing. The basic idea is that in traditional computing, everything is expressed by a gate that's either open and closed, a one or a zero. Quantum computing allows you to do that with different states, and so you can compute things a lot faster. It's easier to express things. If you tried to express every word and thought and emotion in the English language with zero and one, it would get quite long. If, though, you have a standard language, more meaning can be compiled together because you have more letters, more, more ways to express uh, a, a, dig a digit than just two of them, it makes it more efficient to compute. It simply goes through faster in the most physical sense. Um, or at least that's my understanding basically of quantum computing. I'm sure it's it probably, you could write books on it uh, that would go well above and beyond, but I wouldn't understand them and I don't think most of you would either. I think I'm going to leave that kind of physics and computing to people who have 10 PhDs, if, if I may. Now they've got to try to make it more stable, because apparently one problem is that sometimes it'll spit out the wrong uh, quantum state or something, and, and so when you're dealing with large calculations, you could be wrong catastrophically. Um, so they're talking about an increase, potentially, in computing abilities by uh, how many orders of magnitude, like <laughs> a large number of them. That would be nice. I, by the way, some people are like, oh no, Google's going to create like the singularity. I'm not going to sit here being afraid of it. People were afraid of traditional computing like this as well. My goodness, in 10 years, computers will be smarter than humans. Well, it didn't happen, did it? My laptop's not smarter than me. It might, uh, it might have some advantages, like <laughs> this calculator is certainly a lot better than me trying to do math, especially in my head. Uh, but by and large, like I'm, I'm more sophisticated than a laptop computer. Quantum processing probably can push computing well over the human biological limit as far as our minds go, and it can be used for all sorts of tasks as well. I, for one, welcome the idea of having a laptop that can store what we would consider virtually inexhaustible amounts of data. Like imagine, you know, instead of 2D videos, you got holograms. Uh, instead of music in the current sense, you know, a computer can literally make cool music and shit. Like on its own, and you know, from the comfort of your home, not some supercomputer in a lab somewhere that takes up as much space as a Mack truck, but something that would be on your desk. Imagine gaming, how immersive that could get. I know some people think it's dystopian, because, like, well, it's a replacement for the real world. Well, 
You know, the real world can suck sometimes if we can compute more efficiently and make technology go better, and there's no reason really to hold back. And that's, I'm not really a primitivist when it comes to computers. I think that they can be helpful. I think they're misused uh, for military purposes especially, but that being said, still a net benefit in the world. Look how much medicine has come, you know, how far medicine has gone. Imagine quantum computing, if it's, you know, perfected. Uh, with genetic research you know we could make our own dinosaurs and shit that'd be pretty fun we wouldn't even we'll literally just design them from scratch why not we i mean we got the bone we don't have dna but we know roughly what they looked like and some things about them we can make our own faux dinosaurs we can reverse engineer we'll just reverse engineer a chicken and we'll run it through a bunch of quantum computers that'll tell us how to make a t-rex i don't see a problem with this I mean, develop uh, artificial womb assembly lines and we can have like pet triceratops and shit. Just make sure you make enough for me. That's about all. Peace out.